Hi, so I'm here with Shord Vincius, who's the lead author of a new paper uh, with uh, Chris Ponting and other colleagues from the University of Edinburgh. And um, I wanted just to sort of really get a, a you know overview of what it was that you set out to do and what the findings show. This is obviously a big data study. You used a lot of data from many, many, many patients. So why don't you tell us what the goal, what you did and what the goal was? Great. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, so our goal was uh, essentially twofold. Um, so first of all, uh, we sought to understand um, structural biomarker differences uh, between individuals with uh, MECFS and individuals without MECFS. Mm -hmm. Um, and for this, um, we'd noticed in the literature that previous studies tended to be uh, relatively smaller scale, um, which uh, makes replication difficult. Um, so given that uh, the UK has this, this lovely national database, the UK Biobank, containing half a million individuals, um, we sought to leverage this data set and do a proper study um, so for... The um, the point was that yeah. basically in previous studies, they have a small data set, they find something in another study, exactly. find something else, but they can't quite replicate that other uh, previous study. And so you wanted to, as you say, leverage this massive database to try to tweak out what was going on. Exactly. And the database is so large that it allows for um, internal replication. So um, within the population we have in the database, we could separate these off into two disjoint groups um, and perform our analysis of the biomarkers in both groups separately and disjointly, and then check if the results uh, co-occur. Mm -hmm. um, and given that um, MECFS is known to be a female bias disease, um, so the incidence in um, Females is, is uh, approximately a three to one ratio uh, to males. Um, we divided this group up firstly in the male subpopulation and the female subpopulation. So the, um, yeah, we found 116 um, significant uh, biomarkers um, that were different uh, both between MECFS in the male population um, and uh, those with MECFS and without in the female population. Um, and this was amongst uh, slightly more than 3,200 different biomarkers. Right. So, so let's be clear, these were blood-based uh, biomarkers. Um, and uh, you were looking at um, how many patients and how many um, non-patients? Um, so our largest study set was 1,455 individuals with MECFS um, and 131,303 um, uh, individuals without uh, MECFS. Um, those numbers are quite um, particular, um, but there are, uh, there are good reasons for that. Um, so the um, blood markers that Biobank has available come in three types. So there's the general um, uh, blood uh, chemistry or blood markers like uh, vitamin D um, or HDLC uh, levels of, um, sorry, uh, markers of that type. Um, and these have been measured for the entire biobank population. Mm -hmm. um, so these we could use for our largest subsets of 1,455 individuals with ME and about 130,000 without. Now, just want to clarify yeah. one point that the the um, ME or MECFS patients were those who had said they had been diagnosed um, by a clinician with some version of ME or CFS. So it clearly would be a variety of people with done by yes. different case definitions. And the, I'm sorry, the the other group, the healthy control, the healthy controls were just people who had not been given. Uh, an MECFS or did not report having been given an MECFS uh, diagnosis uh, by a clinician. Is that that's correct? Uh, yeah, that's that's approximately correct. Uh, there were some further layers uh, we did to um, uh, strengthen the case diagnosis, but also strengthen the control diagnosis. Um, so um, everyone enrolled in Biobank uh, reports an average overall health rating. Um, so we had consulted with um, uh, colleagues and, and people with ME um, and uh, came to the conclusion that uh, an overall good or excellent health rating 
doesn't fit with uh, the symptomology of the condition. Mm -hmm. um, so um, <clears throat> for the healthy controls, we selected uh, subsets to individuals with good or excellent health rating. Um, but for those with um, MECFS, uh, we removed uh, those individuals. They were very small in number, but just to be sure, uh, we took those out. Um, and there was a second important piece of information, which is the pain questionnaire um, in the UK Biobank. Um, this was sent around in 2019. Um, and about a third of the participants have filled this in. Um, on the pain questionnaire, um, people were explicitly asked, have you ever been told by a, um, have you ever been diagnosed by uh, uh, a physician uh, with MECFS? Um, so for the controls, we ensured that they did not say yes uh, mm -hmm. to this question. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, you took all these data from all these, uh, uh patients and controls and what was it you found, as you said, 116, uh, markers, um, which are generally molecules, uh, what, 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 when you talk about a trait or a marker, what are the sort of categories of types of things that that means? Um, cell ratios as well as uh, 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 certain molecules and, and so on? Yeah, absolutely. So this could be um, uh, molecules found in blood, um, and that might be uh, uh, yeah, a little bit more familiar to all of us, like like cholesterol levels. Um, it could be something like um, uh, a count or a percentage of white blood cells um, or red blood cells in the blood um, and uh, a large number of, um, of our blood measurements was of proteins. Okay. Um, so there are about 2,900 proteins. Um, so I previously mentioned that there were three groups of uh, markers we investigated. Um, and they have been measured on um, the full biobank sets, about 60% uh, of the biobank and about 10% of the biobank. Mm -hmm. So that's for the blood markers, the lipids and the proteins, uh, respectively. Um, so as a result, um, for example, for proteins, we had a lot less statistical power um, because we had to work with about 170 um, cases. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the controls are typically no problem, but uh, as we know, the cases are smaller yeah, okay. in number. So what were the, um, you, you found um, in 116 biomarkers, they fell into sort of three broad categories of sort of uh, domains, it sounds like. One, inflammation and so on. And why don't you tell mm -hmm. us what, what, how, how would you categorize the, the biomarkers that you found? Uh, right. So I should say on the uh, on the outset that I'm uh, I, I'm not a clinician um, yeah. uh, from that perspective. So we uh, we we spoke with experts uh, to see um, whether um, these signatures essentially of of all these biomarkers, um, if there were coherent signals that could be detected. Um, so, for example, if there is uh, chronic inflammation, um, which is one of the signals that um, was pointed out. Um, then you would expect certain markers to be larger uh, in people with the condition and other markers to be lower uh, in people with the condition. Mm -hmm. um, so we ensured that these, um, these findings were essentially consistent um, between chronic inflammation, um, liver dysfunction, and also insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. um, so those were the three patterns we found. And so what does that mean in terms of, I mean, I think you're very careful in terms of the, in the paper to make it clear that these, these, this is not, uh, you know, individual, you know, uh, um, viable for individual diagnosis and that the idea uh, of getting a, an overall panel of tests is a theoretical possibility, but certainly not proven by this in any way. It just opens the door. How, I mean, how would you characterize what the prospects or what the implications of this are at this point? Yeah, that's that's absolutely correct. So the results we've seen uh, have been obtained by methods that look at the populations as a whole. Um, so the, the, the case cohort that we've defined in the biobank of those with ME versus the control cohort um, of those without ME. Um, and on this level, differences, um, we have yeah, identified these differences. Um, so yes, uh, at the moment, that doesn't mean that if we have the uh, blood measurements of a single individual, we would be able to predict 
um, if uh, if they have ME or if they do not have ME. Mm -hmm. um, so what this does it does do is it shows us that there is um, there is signal in the blood that is um, that is observable. Um, so there are um, there are biological consequences of the condition, um, and that means that uh, in principle. Um, this, uh, these differences, sorry, the condition could be detectable from blood. Um, so now one, um, well, there are essentially two um, uh, questions to pursue at the moment. Of the 3,200 markers we've, um, we've considered, is there a subset that is um, manageably small um, and uh, sufficiently informative to provide such a marker panel? Um, so that's one question. Um, and the second question is, are there perhaps markers that were not in the biobank um, that could be helpful in, in strengthening such a prediction signal? Right. But you've already, from the 3,200, you've already gotten it down to 116. Yes, absolutely. So those are the ones we uh, we would start with uh, okay. most certainly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what about? Oh, we I don't we didn't talk about the uh, inactivity. I mean, that's in, included in the title and central part of your study design. In fact, so let's talk about that. That these were determined not to be associated with inactivity, which is obviously an important point um, for MECFS. So why don't you describe how you uh, uh, tweet, tweaked out that possibility or those, that issue? Right. Yeah. So in, in the past, um, others have proposed that the uh, symptoms in the condition itself is due to uh, reduction in activity and because of uh, fatigue and, and pain and the other symptoms we're, we're all too um, aware of. Um, and uh, yeah, so we sought to understand, first of all, if there's an effect of if there's a difference between those with MECFS and without on markers. Um, and as you point out, secondly, we wanted to understand how this effect relates to um, a reduction in activity. Um, so one could argue that those with MECFS are generally less active. Um, we see that in our data um, than those without MECFS. And then one could wonder, does that explain um, the differences you find in markers? Um, and we've used some uh, recent mathematical results from 2022, actually, so very recent, that allows us to decompose um, the contribution due to activity and the contribution due to everything else. Mm -hmm. um, and essentially, we found that uh, it is, apart from one case, never the case that it's due to inactivity. Uh, so due to a reduction in activity that we see these marker differences. That it, it is not, that it is it not. is not due to inactivity. Exactly. Yeah. So we've been very careful in the study um, to um, robustify this finding. Um, Biobank has measured activity levels in multiple ways. Um, uh, so we've used all three ways um, we could find to answer this question. And uh, they gave the same answer. It's, it's not due to inactivity. Um, um, let's let's make one thing clear. Um, the Science Media mm -hmm. Center posted a couple of comments. Um, one from uh, Professor Alan Carson, also at the University of Edinburgh, um, and he claimed that there was no correction for multiple tests, um, and that therefore this was all due by chance. Uh, he seems to have un misunderstood uh, mm -hmm. at that point. But why don't you sort of explain wh why he's wrong? Right. Um, yeah, so that the, that comment is indeed incorrect. Um, so we have used um, standard techniques uh, in, in statistics and in these areas to correct for the fact that we test so many hypotheses. Um, so in our case, specifically, we have um, um, used a Benjamin E. Hochberg method for, for people who are familiar with that. Um, and uh, what it essentially states is of all the discoveries that are found, in this case, 116, um, we expect at most five uh, to potentially be incorrect. Um, so in my calculation, that's five or six right. of the 116. Right, and he, uh, he thought that they all would be found by chance. So he thought that there was no correction made. Um, so he misunderstood that there had been a correction made. So I just wanted to clarify that point uh, for anybody. Absolutely. Yeah, all the analyses are multiple hypotheses corrected. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, sure. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Um, I think we've covered anything else that you want to add about about the paper or you know what you uh, 
uh, that I haven't asked? Um, let's see. Well, so one, uh, I guess one finding I would, would like to mention um, is because we uh, performed our uh, analyses both in the male population and the female population. Um, so these 116 biomarkers uh, have been found significant in, in both populations. Um, and one thing that struck us was how uh, concordant the results were, were between both the male and the female populations, um, given the known um, uh, female bias uh, in terms of, of those who have ME um, uh, versus males. So what are the implications Um, of that, the fact that it's the same in both? I mean, what is, why is that a significant finding? so it, it might suggest that the, the condition is... Um, Although it, for some reason, occurs more often in, in females than males, um, it, it seems to suggest that uh, there is a similar um, signature of the condition uh, in the blood. And did Um, you also found that that the signal was stronger uh, even within patients among those who had worse health or those who reported more symptoms? Was there anything... Yes. Yeah. Thank you for asking that. Yeah. So those are two, two important points. So we indeed checked um, whether or not signals strengthen if uh, people report a worse general health. Um, this is true. Among the patient, Uh, among the patient group. absolutely. Yes. Yes. Um, and secondly, and this was an important point um, uh, also raised by uh, one of the reviewers. Um, so the more recent, so the biobank um database was set up uh, in 2006 to 2010 um, and since then um, the Canadian consensus definition has, has come in which includes post-exertional malaise as a, a very important um, crucial symptom of, um, of diagnosis um, so we have um, we had uh, available proxy information for post-exertional malaise um, in the pain questionnaire from 2019 Um, so we repeated our analysis for the subset of individuals with PEM. Um, and again, we found that signals sharpened. Um, so results were um, more significant and larger in general, um, which is, yeah. So And, you were saying. and one final point, then, I, I gather because the UK Biobank requires people to come in to give their samples, uh, they don't go out to people's homes. So you probably have a sample which is minus many severe patients or any severe patients uh, who would not be able to come in. Um, so that means that if you actually were to test severe, it might be that you might even have a stronger signal if you see already a range in the, in the severity uh, being correlated with the strength of the signal. Is that is that something? Yeah, that's a, that's an excellent remark. Yeah, so the exactly everyone in the UK Biobank has had to uh, travel to an assessment center for their um, information and samples to be taken. Um, so that would generally, um, yeah, certainly be those with milder symptoms and a milder version of the condition. So we would be very interested in pursuing uh, a similar, perhaps smaller scale study um, on. Um, Uh, a set of individuals with uh, with a more severe uh, version of the condition, um, but of course, uh, yeah, logistically, this is um, this is a little more challenging. Well, yeah, it's, they have to go, you have to go to them. It's very difficult. Absolutely, Well, yeah, maybe, and well, maybe and we people. should, yeah. Okay, um, thank you again, Short. I appreciate it. Rowan, thank you very much for your time.